So the next step with the custom VBA based navigation system is to think about the code that's going to actually navigate around the file. So when we click on one of these shapes, what is the code that's going to be triggered to allow us to move around the file? So let's get back into uh, the spreadsheet. Let's go straight into the Visual Basic editor. Um, and let's think about a code that would help us move around the file. Let's have a new sub, call it select sheet. Now, of course, you could uh, record some code to do this. That would be good practice, but the code's fairly straightforward. You might know it already. Let's just have sheets one dot select. So that's simple line of code. It's gonna select the first sheet uh, in the workbook. So let's, let's give that a quick go. And we can see the sheet uh, has changed there. So that's nice and simple, uh, works fine. Um, so what are our options here? Uh, well, we could create, we've got 11 sheets in the workbook. We could create 11 different macros and that would work absolutely fine. But it's a little bit labor intensive. It's labor intensive to have to write all of those routines. That's gonna be a lot of copy and pasting and there's some scope for human error there. Uh, and it's gonna be annoying having to assign uh, different macros to each button. Um, so it's too labor intensive really. What are the alternatives? Well, there are, there is a good alternative which is to create a dynamic uh, navigation routine. Uh, so using just a single routine, we can allocate the same routine to all of the buttons and that routine will understand from the button that's been clicked, will understand where the user wants to go. So that's just a single routine. So we don't need five, 10, 11 routines, just a single program uh, that we can allocate to all of the buttons and regardless of which button is clicked, it's gonna take us to the correct sheet. So maybe stop the video and have a think, how might we do that? Uh, we've thought about how to create loops and how to manipulate the variables to get things done. Um, so from what we've done so far, and I have been quite explicit about it in previous videos, from what we've done so far, the things we've created, what piece of information might help us with this dynamic navigation routine, might help us to get to whichever sheet is required just using a single routine. So have a think about that now. Well, let's look at this uh, piece of code. Uh, so this is something that would be difficult to record. You know, it is from my own um, experience. Uh, but let's try... Let's just try this. Uh, application caller. Okay. Um, and let's assign that to this button here. So I've assigned the macro select sheet. Uh, to this button here. I'm not, not sure if this is going to work, but you shouldn't be scared with code. Save the file, back it up, then just see if it works. The best way to learn is to try it, and then Excel will tell you what's wrong. You can fix it. So let's give this code a go. There we go. Okay, so I've clicked on that uh, button, and it's coming up with dashboard. Okay, so why is that? Well, the name of the button is dashboard, that's what we did in the previous video, we gave all of the buttons names. The name of the video, the name of the button rather, is dashboard, um, and that's the information that this line, very interesting line of code, application.caller, extremely useful as well if you can harness it. So application.caller is the name of whatever triggers the code. And it could be the name of, name of a button, for example. In this case, we've got a shape. So Excel is returning the name of the object that triggered the code. Now, this presents intriguing possibilities to us if we're trying to create this custom navigation-based system with a single routine. Because if Excel knows the name of the button that was used to, to trigger the code, remember, we've already given the buttons names that correspond to the sheets. We can then harness that to get us navigating to the right sheet. So all of these elements combining together to create a super powerful little, little macro that's gonna really uh, bring everything together in this navigation system. If that doesn't make sense, you know, we're only talking in conceptual terms at the moment, don't worry about it, just persevere with the video, it will make sense as we go along. Um, so 
let's just extend extend this code a little bit. We, we want to um, select a sheet, okay? And we know that application call dot caller returns the name of the button. Uh, so sheets application dot caller dot select. Let's just try this. Not absolutely sure if, if this is going to work, but what are we expecting to happen? Well, if I click the uh, D button there, the name of the button is dashboard. So that's what Excel will recognize in the application caller part here. So sheets dashboard dot select is what Excel should interpret this command as. And we have a sheet in the workbook outside of your screenshot down at the bottom. Hopefully you're working through uh, this with me, but we have a sheet called dashboard in the workbook. So hopefully it's going to navigate uh, to that uh, sheet. Let's give it a go. Okay, that's not quite working now, not quite sure about this error. So I think I need a little bit um, more. So let's try the active sheets um, shapes directory. Okay, so just you know, improve the completeness of this code. You might say, "Oh, I fixed it," but I've given some more information uh, for Excel here. So I've said um, the name of the shape um, that called the macro. Okay, I'm going to test this with a message box first. So using the FA key going through. Okay, we've got another error there. So let's try to work out what's going on here. Name. Okay, that's because I didn't call the macro by clicking a shape, which is what I've got to do. Let's put a stop in here. Okay, there we go. That seems to be working well. Okay. Okay, let's give this one more go. Okay, let's go to dashboard. There we go. Good. So obviously, I think possibly what I got wrong before um, I have to click on the button in all, so that the macro is triggered from the right place. Because remember, um, Excel is understanding the object that triggered the macro. So if I just trigger it in the codes, um, you know, it's not the right object that's triggering the, mac the macro. The object that we want to trigger the macro is uh, the shape, and the shape should correspond to the sheet that we're trying to go to. Okay, so if it doesn't make sense, just work through it. Uh, it should do. Um, this seems to work well, so I'll demonstrate that again. I'm clicking on D, and it's taking me uh, to the dashboard sheet. So that's great. Um, but I want this macro to be applied to all of the other shapes as well. So how could I do that? Well, I could manually select the shapes, and you can do that quickly, remember, by going home, and then outside of your screenshot, find and select all the way over on the right-hand side, find and select and then select objects. That's a good way to do it, but we're, we're looking at kind of programmatical solutions. Um, so let's try, let's take some code we've already used. Again, recycling is definitely a, you know, a virtue in programming. And let's say um, change uh, macro. So with this, with this sub, we want to change the macro that runs when the shape is clicked. So obviously we could do that easily, right click on the shape, assign macro, that's the routine way to do it. And you could do that and record the code and that would allow you to get this line of code. Because the line of code is a little bit obscure. But the line of code we want is, um, that's it dot uh, on action on action and on action is um, it means which macro will be triggered when the shape is clicked that's what it means um, so so it's waiting for me to tell it that to tell it which macro to, to look at I'm going to change the name of this macro it's not very informative it doesn't correspond the name doesn't correspond with the function of the macro so let's call this dynamic navi because it's dynamic in the sense of whichever button you click, it should get you to the right sheet. And then I've got to put that in speech marks, just here. So we can run this, this, um, this code now, and it should 
assign this dynamic ma navi macro, it will assign the macro to each of the buttons on this sheet, or at least that's what we're looking for it to do. So let's just play the macro. And then I can go to right click on the button and I can see the dynamic uh, navi macro has been assigned to that shape, just right clicking assign macro. Okay, this looks good. So this is a bit like the moment of truth for us. It's all coming together. So now I should be able to click on one of these buttons and it should run the code and go to whichever uh, sheet the button corresponds to. So let's give it a go. Okay, that seems to have worked. It's gone to the Q4 sheet. Going back to um, the page I want to get to, back, back to the original sheet, Q4 worked. So let's try Q10. Okay, that has taken me to person 10. So it seems to be, seems to be working well. Okay, excellent. So that's, that's as far as we're going to go uh, on this video. But we've looked at this beautiful little, um, such a powerful routine, this dynamic navigation uh, macro. In fact, let, let's just talk through it again quickly. So this macro is assigned to each of these buttons. When we click on these buttons, uh, this macro dynamic navi is going to run. So what's it doing? It's taking the name of the shape and you can remember I placed some emphasis on the importance of making sure that the shapes were named correctly. That's what we've done in previous videos. So it's taking the name of the shape and then using that name to navigate to a certain sheet. So clearly, if you change the names of the sheets, it's not going to work anymore. It's important that there's that consistency. The names of the sheets are the same as the names of the buttons. But if you can do that, then you can use this... Um, this uh, dynamic navi uh, routine, it's going to navigate you around the sheets, uh, very, uh, around the worksheet very smoothly. The most important thing is it's one routine. So I've just allocated the same routine to each button and with a single line of code, it's getting us to exactly where we need to get to uh, in the spreadsheet. So good stuff. So we're getting very close to, um, I mean, this is exactly what we want but we just need to get it on each sheet. Yeah, we need to get these buttons on each sheet. So how are we gonna do that? Well, obviously we could do it um, manually, you know, copy and paste all the buttons, that would work fine. But if we had, you know, 50 sheets, that would be extremely labor intensive. So we're gonna look at uh, how we can harness VBA to copy and paste those shapes across the sheets. And that means we'll be moving towards completing our uh, custom VBA based uh, navigation system. I'll see you in the next video.